Hello, my name is Suresh Kodagal and uh, I am a pediatric neurologist and a pediatric sleep specialist here at uh, Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm also a professor in the Department of Neurology uh, here at uh, Mayo Clinic. I have a special interest in children and adolescent sleep problems. Uh, and uh, here at Mayo Clinic, we have um, a very nice setup for uh, evaluating and uh, treating children and adolescents who have sleeping and waking problems. Believe it or not, sleeping and waking problems are very common in children and uh, teenagers. In teenagers, close to 40% uh, of teens uh, seem to express a need for more sleep. They're just just not getting enough sleep at, in, at night, so they are uh, significantly sleepy in the daytime as a result of that. The type of sleep problems that we evaluate here at Mayo Clinic varies. There are some problems uh, where uh, people just do not go to sleep at night. We call insomnia. Other times there are conditions like restless legs syndrome, uh, they had to keep the child up at night. Yet other times, uh, children have snoring and difficulty with breathing through the night, and that is called sleep apnea. Uh, and then there are other conditions where children in general tend to s just be excessively sleepy in the daytime. There are also problems of the biological clock where the days and nights get mixed up. So there's a whole host of uh, different uh, sleep problems that uh, we uh, evaluate. Uh, we do it in a multidisciplinary setting. So I work with the uh, child uh, neurology, other child neurology uh, specialists, the pediatric pulmonary or uh, respiratory specialists, the ear, nose, and throat uh, specialists, our nurses, uh, and uh, psychiatrists, and so on. How sleep problems can present in teenagers Sometimes they're excessively sleepy. Other times, however, they just are inattentive, are not able to pay attention at school. Yet other times, they are emotionally labile. In other words, they just fly off the handle easily, get upset easily. So sleep disorders can present in very many ways, especially with poor attention, concentration, and uh, emotionally labile moods. And, um, you know, if we look at uh, the part of the brain that is affected by sleepiness, it seems to be this region here, the frontal lobes. And the frontal lobes have a major function in uh, we call affect controls, control of our emotions. Uh, the frontal lobes also have a major role in uh, s uh, regulating sustained attention, being able to pay attention for long periods of time. So whenever there is a sleep disruption, uh, the uh, ability to control our moods becomes less and also the ability to f stay focused at school or while driving, uh, etc. becomes impaired. So uh, sleep disorders seem to affect the regions of the brain uh, which are very, uh, uh, very important regions in general. Interestingly, the parts of the brain that are affected with sleep disruption are the same parts that are affected with alcohol intoxication. So we can see how uh, sleepiness and alcohol intoxication are very similar in uh, their uh, uh, impact upon, upon the nervous system. So, um, you know, what is it that we can do to help our uh, uh, teenagers? First of all, uh, I think if they, are, if they are excessively sleepy all the time, day in, day out, they come home and take a nap, that is not normal and they probably should be evaluated as a sleep center for that. Or if they're waking up in the morning feeling tired, not occasionally, but every morning when they wake up, if they're tired and unrefreshed, that is also another sign that they might have a sleep disorder. 